Yeah, um, everyone, let us all pay respects to Ben and Jen together. Bye. So, how is everybody? Mm, yeah, I'm doing okay. <laughs> You're doing okay. We, we might not do okay, yeah? The moment it starts raining heavily, we don't hear anything. So we, oh. we might have to, to, to break it up. <clears throat> okay. It's the rainy season starting already. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's all year rainy season already. <laughs> but now it is really raining every day. Yeah. <clears throat> so, how, how many people are in the session? Today there is 20, 21, 21 people. Oh. And, and mostly from Singapore, Malaysia, Pune. Yeah, I think I think there are other countries. <laughs> yeah, so you can tell where you're from. I think there are people from Thailand. There are people from Thailand as well. <clears throat> so I hope the people from Thailand understand English. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what? Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I can speak English, but I want, if I have anything, I won't speak German because I am a German guy. Yeah, you can speak I, German. Yeah. No, um, I can leave my answer in German. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm, I'm only uh, here for looking around. Uh -huh. Okay, um, some, some dates to my person. I live in Thailand 12 years ago with the family. Uh, I have one son. Now he starts uh, study in Chula Longkong in this year. And uh, I live in the south of Thailand, near Nakhon Sitamawa. Oh, that, is, that is very close to the border of Malaysia, huh? Sorry, I don't understand you. That is close to the border of Malaysia? Um, I don't understand, sorry. Wo, wo, du, wo du lebst, das ist in der Nähe von der, von der malaysischen Regierung. Uh, not far away from Malaysia, around um, 300 kilometers mm. to the border of Malaysia. Okay. Was one of those provinces. So, was ist deine Frage? Um, eigentlich, uh, ich habe noch keine konkrete Frage bisher, bis auf eines. Ich bin jetzt uh, im 61. Lebensjahr. Ich lebe schon, also wie gesagt, schon elf Jahre hier. Und die einzige Frage, die sich mir noch stellt, ist, was kann man noch tun mit 61? Man kann praktizieren. Ja, das Jetzt? ist mir, äh, ja. Das ist das Wichtigste, ja. Ja. Mit 61 kannst du auch dein nächstes Leben vorbereiten. Ja, so ungefähr denke ich mir das. Ja. Weil, ähm, du kommst aus Schwaben, oder? Ja, klar. Äh, aus, ich komme aus Singen, am Bodensee. Aus Singen? Oh. <lacht> der, schwabische, der schwäbische Akzent ist uns. Ja. Und, ja. Alles klar. Ja, hast du denn jetzt eine Familie da? Ja, das ist da, ähm, wie gesagt, äh, ich lebe mit meiner Frau jetzt schon äh, hier elf Jahre. Wir kennen uns insgesamt, ähm, wie viel haben wir jetzt? Wir haben 19 Jahre, oder? Sind wir schon verheiratet. Äh, die Frau hat früher in, in Deutschland gelebt, sechs Jahre lang. Der Sohn kam in Deutschland zur Welt. Und ähm, wurde dort auch eingeschult, also in die erste Klasse, oder? in Deutschland wurde er eingeschult. Den Kindergarten hat er in Deutschland verbracht. Aber 
Aurora in Deutschland. Aus meiner Sicht war das so eine Katastrophe mit der Schule. Und die Frau hatte damals schon äh, diverse Probleme mit dem Rücken und so. Und die Kälte in Deutschland hat ihr nicht zugesagt damals. Und dann sind die zurück nach Thailand. Ich habe äh, der Frau im Prinzip äh, rund 40 Reihen äh, Grundstück gekauft. Wir haben hier eine Kautschukplantage und die Familie lebt ausschließlich von diesen Sachen. Oder? Also ich habe kein Einkommen derzeit aus Deutschland oder so, weil ich habe Rentenansprüche, habe ich ja noch keine mit 61. Und äh, ja, und das ist ungefähr die Situation, oder? Und äh, wie gesagt, der Sohn fängt jetzt das Studium an in Chola Longhorn, oder? Der mhm. fängt an mit Politikwissenschaft. Der möchte in International Affairs, also im Prinzip so Richtung Wirtschaftsverteidigung mhm. und sowas. Ja, alles, alles klar. Ne? Äh, was, ich, was ich dir vorschlage, wenn du Zeit hast, dass du hierher kommst und mit mir persönlich sprichst. Ne? Ja, das habe ich eigentlich auch vor. Ja. Das, ich denke, klar, das wird zwingend nicht. Das wird zwingend notwendig sein, ja, denke ich schon. Okay, so. Wenn du jetzt keine, keine andere wichtige Frage hast, ne, dann lass uns zu den anderen gehen, ja? ja okay, kein Problem. Weiter ja. mit den anderen. Mhm. Okay. Yeah, I, I, there's something that I I really want to talk about. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit yeah. What you can say, you know, I'm a little bit frustrated about this the situation <clears throat> here, and the situation is with with people who come here and want to ordain, and yeah. I mean, we put a lot of effort yeah, and resources, you know, into ordaining them. Then we put some, some effort and resources, you know, in getting them a visa. And then we put some effort and resources, you know, I mean, to train them. Yeah. And then after, after three or six months, you know, they either disrobe and then they, or they leave, yeah, because they are not satisfied with the way they think things should be. I have no problem if you come here as a lay person and, and just want to practice. Being a monk is different from just being practicing. Yeah? And people don't seem to understand it. Yeah? Ordaining as a monk, yeah? I mean, means a lot of things. I mean, it means in order to have a complete new lifestyle. So everybody has, everything has to be taught to you again. Yeah? And a lot of the Western people, you know, I mean, they don't like it or they refuse it or they, they find, you know, that we are scolding, reprimanding them too often, yeah? But that is the training, yeah? I mean, we have to learn as a monk, yeah? First of all, we have to learn the ordination procedure, then we have to learn the chants, you know, that, that are necessary for our livelihood. <clears throat> And then we have to learn. I mean, we even have to learn how, how to wear our robes. We have to learn how, hmm, how to wash the robes. We have to learn, even we have to learn how to sit properly. We have to learn how to eat properly. It is not the same as, you know, as, as being a lay person. Yeah? And this is something that, you know, some of the people don't understand. Yeah? <clears throat> and I just want to mention, I just want to mention it for anybody you know who listens into that I mean coming here and ordaining as a monk is is can be very difficult, yeah. And here it is in and here in this monastery, you know, I mean it is probably tougher than in other monasteries. Because we adhere to the Vinaya yeah? and in the Vinaya everything is how you behave, everything is put down, yeah. <clears throat> and then people feel, you know, I mean, feel that they are constantly reprimanded, constantly scolded, you know, and then they just run away, you know, or disrobe. Yeah? And when you think about, when, when, when I think about the monks, you know, who come here and who are really want to stay as monks, all what they have to do is train this, you know, train a new, 
train a new monk, you know, and then he leaves. And then comes another one who wants to attain, train him, and then he leaves. And then train him, and then he leaves. Huh? And they have nothing else to do than train him. I mean, they didn't come. They didn't come here, you know, in this monastery just to train other people, yeah, or to train monks, yeah. They want to. They want to practice the, for themselves, yeah. <clears throat> So, I mean, please, you know, anybody, you know, who has the intention, yeah, of becoming a monk, I mean, he should be aware of it, yeah? I mean, you have to learn, you have to learn everything anew, yeah? You cannot behave like a learned person, yeah? <clears throat> and that, And that might be difficult, especially for older people, you know, because they have their ways of dealing with things, they have their ways of washing, you know, and, and, uh, <clears throat> and sitting and eating, and everything has to be relearned, yeah? And that, yeah, that hurts our ego, yeah? And then the people, you know, come, you know, and explode, they get angry, you know, why do you constantly reprimand me, or, yeah, and so on, yeah? <clears throat> and we also have to remi remind ourselves when we, <clears throat> when we want to become monks, yeah? I mean the training of the monk, the Lord Buddha, yeah? Think about it. The Lord Buddha laid out a, quite a few rules. Yeah? I mean, if you are ordained as a monk the first five years, yeah, you are with your first teacher, yeah? the teacher that you select. Yeah? So be careful in selecting the first teacher, because you cannot leave that teacher within the next five years. Hmm? You are not allowed to go anywhere without the, without the permission of the teacher. Hmm? This is the first five years of training according to the Vinaya. Yeah? You cannot just go alone, yeah? <clears throat> I want to go on to Dong. You know, you cannot go alone on to Dong. You cannot go, go alone here and there. Yeah? There's, there is always a, a more senior monk, you know, who is accompanying you, and you need the permission of your teacher to go. Yeah? If you don't have the per permission, then, yeah, and you still go, then you're a runaway monk, yeah? <clears throat> a, a useless monk, you know, who is not really interested in the training of a monk. So the first five years, you know, I mean, you need the permission, yeah? You need the permission. You always, every night, you have to stay, you know, with your teacher, yeah? Unless he gives you permission to stay with somebody else, or he gives you permission to leave and to go to another monastery. But if he doesn't think it is fit that you leave to another monastery, especially if he knows the monastery and, and he, he does not agree there, then you cannot leave, yeah? <clears throat> After five years, you still have the higher training as a monk, yeah? until, the, until the tenth year. And this is something that people don't realize or don't want, you know, they just want to ordain as a monk and then, then they want to, you know, go, go here and there, visit this monastery, visit that monastery, stay in there. Yeah? I mean, once, once you have ordained five years, you know, with your teacher, then, then you can go on to Dong, and then you can ask the teacher in order to go on to Dong, yeah? And the permission is granted. You can stay away, you know, for, for nine months, yeah? But for the rainy seasons, you have to be with a teacher. That's also. No matter, it doesn't have to be the same teacher, then you can go to another monastery. This, the, the sixth year, you can stay with this teacher, the seventh year with that teacher. I mean, that is free for you. But you have to stay until your ten pansa, until your ten rainy seasons, yeah? or ten years a month, you have to stay with the teacher. And you have to pay respect to this teacher and, <clears throat> and take your refuge with the teacher. Take, take your nisai, your dependence on the teacher. Well, people don't understand, seem to not understand, you know, what, what does it mean to de take dependence on your teacher? Yeah? <clears throat> What is it in English? I don't know it. <clears throat> I ask you to be my teacher, you know, I ask you to, to, uh, to, to take dependence on you. The teacher is my burden and, and I'm the teacher's burden. Yeah? <clears throat> that is the vow you, that you do. Yeah? But it doesn't seem to mean anything, you know. I mean, how many monks did we obtain in the last two years and how many of them, you know, are left over? Yeah? One or two. Yeah? We are doing quite a few of them. So just just to remind you. And this is not the only thing. Yeah? I mean, when you look, you know what the Lord Buddha taught, taught us about the training of a monk? Yeah? He compared it to the training of a war elephant, the king's war elephant. 
You get that? He compared the training of a monk to the training of the king's war elephant. Yeah? So the first thing, you know, when they when they catch a, when, when they catch a, the elephant, yeah, he he's bind to a pole, you know, and until he gets calm. Yeah? Once he gets calm, yeah, then the soldiers, you know, put spears in his body and he has, is not allowed to move. So that means there is a lot of pain, yeah, in this kind of training, yeah. And we have to, to be able to endure this uh, this pain, you know, and have to learn from it, yeah. <clears throat> and, and I'm not sure, you know, if the people, you know, who come here, oh, I want to become a monk, are aware of this. So that's why I, you know, that's why I want to yeah, reiterate it. I mean, I sometimes talk about it, you know, especially the training of a war elephant. I mean, it is not an easy training. Hmm? It is very difficult. I mean, every move you, you make, you know, I mean, you're observed by the other monks, you know, and if you do something, if you do something wrong, you know, the other monks will correct you, yeah? Or if you do something wrong, you know, I mean, you will be reprimanded, or, or sometimes you will be scolded, yeah? And that happened to me, I mean, this was my training, I, I under, under, underwent it, you know, for, for five years, you know, and even sometimes, you know, in, in my seventh year, you know, senior monk still, you know, <clears throat> scolded me or reprimanded me or showed me, you know, that's not the way that you should do it, yeah? Yeah, sometimes you forget it, yeah? So you should be, you should be very tolerant, you know, if you want to become a monk, because it is a tough training. And people don't realize it. It's not, you know, it's not that you're a lay person, you know, and just put on different robes, yeah, and behave a little bit different. No, it is a complete new, it's a completely new experience, you know, of how to live a different kind of lifestyle, yeah. <clears throat> so I, I just want to tell the people, you know, who, who think of ordaining, you know, I want to ordain to practice. You know, the first five years, there, there's, there is time to practice, but most of the time, you know, I mean, you will, you will train your new lifestyle. How to put on the robes? It is not easy to put on the robes. How to eat properly? How to wash the robes properly? Even how to shit, how to wash yourself, yeah? I mean, everything you have to learn anew. And people are not aware of it. Then they just think, you know, I mean, oh, I'm already 30 years old, you know, so I, yeah, I mean, I just take my, my behavior as a lay people person, you know, in, in, in the monkhood. That is not possible, yeah? This, this, you know, this I just want, you know, I mean, if people listen to the Zoom session and some people, you know, have, have, have an intention of ordaining, they should know what is coming up upon them, yeah? As I said before, I mean, if you want to practice, you know, and if you fit within this monastery, if you want to practice here, yeah? Practice, you know, just meditation, you know, walking trunk room and, you know, and, and sitting in samadhi and doing investigation, you're welcome to come here. And if you fit within the monastery, you know, if, <clears throat> if nothing is wrong, I mean, you can stay here for a long, long time, yeah? You don't have to ordain, yeah? There is not, not a necessity that you have to ordain, yeah? if you just want to practice. If you want, if you want to be really to become a monk, you know, I mean, be aware that it is a tough training, you know, and it goes against whatever, yeah, whatever the Kilesas tell us, yeah? It goes against our grain, inner grain, yeah, and especially against our ego, yeah. We know it. I have done it for, for so many years, yeah. And, or, I, or it should be like this, or it should be like that. Yeah? So this was the introduction. Now let's come, <laughs> let's go to the questions, yeah. That's the same for, for the Mechis, but they, they don't have this tough training, yeah. It's just a little bit of training, yeah. <clears throat> Would be nice, you know, if you had this tough training as well. You know, it helps, yeah. It helps to get rid of, you know, your ideas, your ego. Yeah? And what did the Lord Buddha say about the path of deliverance, the path to freedom? Yeah, I mean, fighting oneself, yeah, is yeah? to to fight as a single person, a whole army is easier to fight oneself. Yeah, and everything what we think and what we what we memorize, you know, comes from self. Yeah. So we have to completely sub be submissive to a teacher, you know, and trust him. Yeah, the first thing, of course, we have to trust him. Yeah, 
And if we have faith in him, and then we have to be submissive. Whatever he says, you know, I mean, we should really try to follow the best as we can. Yeah, yeah? understood? Hmm? Okay, now now you can ask questions. <clears throat> Thank you, Tanja. So, uh, anyone who has questions to ask, uh, please raise your hand in Zoom. And then you can mute yourself to ask questions. Uh, Joe, you can go ahead. Joe, you're on mute yeah. still. Uh, okay, I'm here. Thank you, Bhante. Um, I have a question about walking meditation. Mm -hmm. I, that was not part of my practice. I never learned it. And um, I'm, I know your instruction for it. I'm trying it, but I haven't had much success. So I'd like to know about how, is it important for me to do walking meditation? How much should I do it for how long? Um, but it, yeah, that's my question. It depends on, yeah? <clears throat> I mean, you are old, so you should do some walking meditation. It is a good exercise, you know, to keep the keep the body, you know, the the, the movements of the body smooth. Yeah. <clears throat> walking meditation, actually, when the mind is very restless, you know, it is the easiest way to get the mind calm. Yeah? We have a path of about yeah, 15 to to 30 meter. We have a, a starting point and we have an end point. Yeah? Yeah. And when we do, I mean, we place our hand, our right hand into the left hand and have it in front of us. Yeah? And, and then we look at the end point and tell ourselves that just this one path, I stay with the Buddha or stay with the breath. Yeah? And our, our eyes are just one meter in front of our feet, yeah? We don't look right and we don't look left, yeah? When we come to the end point, yeah? We just make a very short recollection. Have I been with the Buddha or have I been with the breath all the time? Then we turn around and then determine again. Okay, just this one path, yeah? Not this one hour, two hours, three hours. Just this one path, I want to stay with the Buddha. There's some interference. Uh, so just this one path, I want to be with the Buddha or with the breath, yeah? And then we reach the other point, you know, we reach the end point, and then we turn around and really recollect, have I been, you know, okay, this one path, yeah? So every time you start a new path, yeah, I mean, you, you will be determined, you know, to, to stay with the Buddha, yeah? And check yourself at the end of the path, yeah? That's how you do walking meditation. And if you do this, it is it can get us much, much faster to calm. Because when we sit, you know, we can drift off for a long time. But when we walk, you know, there's an end point where we turn around, yeah? And that is always a good reminder, okay, this one path, yeah? You understand? And how, how many hours, you know, that depends on. I mean, if you like sitting and if you, if you get calm, you know, while doing sitting meditation, yeah, then do more sitting meditation, but, you know, do also walking meditation, yeah? Exchange it, you know, sometimes, you know, do walking meditation, yeah? You sit for two hours or three hours and then do one hour walking meditation, or you walk for three hours and then sit for one hour and do sitting meditation, yeah? I mean, depending on your bodily condition. Some people like to do sitting meditation, yeah? so they do more sitting meditation and walking meditation. Some people like to do walking meditation, and then they uh, do more walking meditation than sitting meditation. Yeah? That depends on our character, yeah? Okay? Okay, I'll keep trying it. <laughs> yeah, you learn to Thank walk. You. Yeah, You learn to walk, yeah? You, you kept trying, you know, to learn to walk. Now you learn to do uh, walking meditation, yeah? Okay, next. Thank you. It starts to rain, so I mean, we have to, to, to rush up probably. Yeah, I don't know if it starts raining heavily, yeah? But let's see. Okay. Uh, anyone else has questions to ask? 
Give us a hand. If that we can we'll go through the questions that were submitted. Okay. I think there's no one raising their hand. So can I join I read out the questions that were submitted? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I just read out the first question. Uh, what should a lay person do when they know a monk is not acting in accordance with the Vinaya, uh, specifically when interacting with women? A lay person shouldn't do anything, yeah? I mean, if he doesn't like this monk, he, he looks for another monk, yeah? I mean, he looks for another monastery. Yeah? <clears throat> he doesn't have to support, yeah? I mean, what the Thai people, what the Thai people normally do, if they see that the monk doesn't behave correctly, they, they just doesn't, they don't support him anymore. So this monk has to leave, you know, and find a new place. You hear the rain? It's deafening. Sunny, yeah. uh, can can we postpone? You know the Zoom Zoom session. You know for for next Saturday. I mean, if it really rains heavy, I don't understand anything. Yeah, and you might only hear about the rain. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, make it next Saturday at 5 o'clock, yes? I'm sorry, but you know, I mean, the weather interferes. <laughs> and maybe you have some more questions next time, yeah? Live questions, yeah? Okay, thank you very much, yeah? Okay, so take an umbrella and now you can do a lot of sitting meditation. You don't even hear your own thoughts anymore.